So 8.2 is solving systems of equations algebraically, and that's on pages 440 to 456 in your text. Our curriculum outcome is to demonstrate understanding of quadratic equations, including the solution of single variable equations and systems of linear quadratic and quadratic equations in two variables. And our lesson objectives, number one, to be able to model a situation using a system of linear quadratic or quadratic quadratic equations. And number two, to be able to answer a system of equations by using substitution or elimination. So since we don't always have access to graphing software, we need to be able to solve systems of equations algebraically as opposed to just graphically. And the point of this is to get from two equations with two variables, usually it's x and y, to one equation with one variable, and then we can just solve it. Then we can solve this new equation for that variable, then use that solution to find the value of the other variable, because you do have to solve for x and y. So the two methods that we learned in Foundations in Pre-Calculus 10 are substitution and elimination, and we'll review both of those today. And remember that regardless of the method that you're using to solve a system of equations, it's always a good idea to verify those answers. So using substitution, here's our example with uh, substitution. It says solve the following system of equations algebraically, 3x plus y equals negative 9, and 4x squared minus x plus y equals negative 9. So when you're solving a system using substitution, you want to make a substitution from one equation to the other. So I'm going to rewrite this first equation as y equals negative 9 minus 3x. That's just moving the 3x over to the other side. And then I'm going to substitute that in to my second equation for y, because I've isolated y, so now I can make that substitution. So I get 4x squared minus x plus, but instead of y, I'm going to put in a negative 9 minus 3x. And that equals negative 9. So I've gone from two equations with two variables, x's and y's, to one equation with one variable, just x's. Now I can just solve this equation. Now, because it's a quadratic, you have to remember how to solve quadratics. We can use factoring or the quadratic formula. So let's see what we come up with when we, get, uh, when we combine all like terms. I get 4x squared, negative x minus 3x is negative 4x, and then minus 9 equals negative 9. If I add 9 to both sides, I just get 4x squared minus 4x equals 0. So to solve this equation, I'm just going to factor by removing a greatest common factor. And then I'm left with 4x times x minus 1. So that means my x values are 0 for this first factor, and x equals 1 for the second factor. Now, we are looking for x's and y's, however. So we need to remember to take these x values and plug them both in to either one of these equations. I'm going to plug them into the first equation. So if x equals 0 in the first equation, I get 3 times 0 plus y equals negative 9. And so that's just 0 comma negative 9 as a point. And if I plug 1 into that first equation, I get 3 times 1 plus y equals negative 9. And that means y equals negative 12. So my second point would be 1 comma negative 12. So both these um, sets of points are answers or, or solutions to this system of equations. And your best bet would be to check them in the second equation as well by plugging in x and y. So using elimination, here's our example for using elimination. It says solve the following system equations algebraically. 6x squared minus x minus y equals negative 1, and 4x squared minus 4x minus y equals negative 6. So the point here is to add these equations together in such a way that we will get rid of one of those variables. And the variable that we're going to want to get rid of, or the only one that we can get rid of, is the y. Uh, we can't get rid of the x because we have an x squared term and an x term. So in order to do that, I have to make sure that I have the same number in front of the y's, but with opposite signs. Now, right now I have negative one in front of the y and negative one in front of this y. So I'm gonna take the second equation. I'm gonna manipulate it by multiplying the entire thing by negative one. And I can do that as long as I do it to both sides of the equation. So my first equation is still six x squared minus x minus y equals negative one. But my second equation is now negative four x squared plus four x plus y equals positive 6. Now when I add these two equations together, 6x squared minus 4x squared is just 2x squared. I add negative x plus 4x, well that's just 3x. And I add negative y plus y, well there are no more y's, and those cancel out. And that's the whole point of doing elimination. Negative 1 plus 6 is positive 5. So now I get an equation. It's a quadratic, so I want to move everything to one side. And then I want to be able to solve this quadratic, so I'm going to factor it. Now because of the two in front, I'm going to use decomposition. So two things that multiply together to give you negative 10, but add together to give you positive 3. And those two things are going to be a uh, negative 2x and a positive 5x. 
I group these things and take out a greatest common factor, so I get 2x times x minus 1 plus 5 times x minus 1. Now I know that I have an x minus 1 as a common factor, and I'm left with 2x plus 5. So I get my 2x values. I get x equaling positive 1, and I get x equaling negative 5 over 2. Now what I need to do is find out the y values for those two points, so I plug them both in to either one of these original equations. I'm going to plug them into the second equation. So when x equals 1, that means I get 4 times 1 squared minus 4 minus y equals negative 6. Well, 4 times 1 squared is 4, 4 minus 4 is 0, so I get negative y equaling negative 6, so I just get y equaling positive 6. There is one of my points, 1 comma 6. Now the other point will be when I plug in a negative 5 over 2. So I get 4 times negative 5 over 2 squared minus 4 times negative 5 over 2 because remember I'm plugging it into this original equation minus y equals negative 6. When I square that fraction I get 25 over 4. Negative 4 times negative 5 over 2 is going to be a positive. 4 times 5 over 2 I still have a negative y, I still have a negative 6. Well, these two 4's cancel each other out. I'm left with 25. This 4 and this 2 simplified just to give you a 2. So then I'm left with 10 minus y equals negative 6. So 35 minus y equals negative 6, which means that negative y equals negative 41. So y equals positive 41. And there's my second point, negative 5 over 2, comma 41. And again, you can check these points by plugging both the x and the y into either one of these equations. Since we use the second equation to find the y, then I would check it or verify it by plugging 1, 6 into the first equation. So it says, Terry makes a good hit and the baseball travels on a path modeled by h equals negative 0.1x squared plus 2x. Ruth is in the outfield directly in line with the path of the ball. She runs towards the ball and jumps and tries to catch it. Her jump is modeled by the equation h equals negative x squared plus 39x minus 378. In both equations, x is the horizontal distance in meters from home plate, and h is the height of the ball above the ground in meters. Solve the system algebraically, round your answer to the nearest hundredth. So if someone hits a ball, it's going to travel in a parabola. And they're saying that that's Terry hitting the ball, and Ruth jumps to make a play on this ball, and jumps and tries to catch that ball. So we have to find out where that actually happens. And to do that, we just need to solve this equation. So we have h equaling negative 0.1x squared plus 2x. And we also have h equaling negative x squared plus 39x minus 378. So what we're going to do is make a substitution. Since we know that h is equal to both these things, I can just substitute this in for h. So negative 0.1x squared plus 2x equals negative x squared plus 39x minus 378. And now I can move everything to one side and make it equal zero. Because we we're going to have to solve this quadratic, now we only have one variable. So we're going to solve that quadratic, and the way that we can do that is by using the quadratic formula, or we can use factoring. But I think in this case, the quadratic formula is going to work the best. So if we move everything over, I get negative 0.9x squared, because I have to add 0.1 to both sides. I get plus 37x and I get negative 378. So this thing, not very easy to factor, so we're going to use the quadratic formula, and I did that, and what I found out is I had two values for x. I had a 22.15 meters, and my second equation, or my second answer, sorry, was 18.96 meters. Now we know that she's only going to catch this ball once, so her path should only cross once. And so we need to figure out which one of these answers is correct. And the way to do that is to plug them both in to either one of these equations. Now I plugged them into the first equation because it was just uh, less less work by the looks of things. And what I found out is that when the height, or sorry, the distance was 22.15 meters, the height of that ball was at negative 4.76 meters. And that didn't make much sense. And that's just by plugging in 22.15 into the equation. So I discarded that answer because I can't have a negative height of the ball. And also just to remember that the first coordinate is x in this case, and the second coordinate happens to be the height of the ball, x comma h. So if I plug in the 18.96 meters, I found out that the height was 1.97 meters, and that made a lot more sense. So here is our 
the answer to the question. So to solve the system algebraically, um, we did that and round our answer to the nearest hundredth. Explain the meaning of the point of intersection. What assumptions are you making? Well, we made an assumption that we can't have a negative height, so we discarded the first answer. And the meaning of this is that um, at uh, 18.96 meters, Ruth catches the ball. And she catches it at a height of 1.97 meters. So you need to know by reading the question what the, these variables means. And it said x is the horizontal distance from home plate and h is the height of the ball above the ground. So she catches it at a height of 1.97 meters, 18.96 meters away from home plate. So in summary, there are two ways to solve a system of equations algebraically. One is by substitution and one is by elimination. In both these cases, we're trying to go from two equations with two variables to, with one, to one equation with one variable. That's always what we're trying to get to so we can solve that one equation. You need to know how to solve a quadratic equation. And the quadratic formula always works, even if you uh, think you might be able to factor it. If you want to just go straight to the quadratic formula, that will work. And you all also need to know how to interpret your answer. So your assignment is on pages 451 to 456. Good luck, and we'll see you in class.